Okay, yeah. So um let's let's talk about uh spinners um spinners, spinner bundles and possibly super symmetry twisting as well. And let's see how much we can cover, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do have to mention I'm still working on like understanding uh, like like to understand like spinner bundles from a rigorous perspective um I see there's still a few things I need to touch um I see but uh, but I can answer I can like do a physicist's version of it sure okay. it's more or less the same thing I'll send you the link on um messenger Okay. Yeah, all right, we can uh, let's go to whiteboard six point one for the day. Okay, yeah. Um I'm back. My tablet. Yeah, I've been trying to study uh I actually I've I've understood a little bit of supersymmetry twisting and it's quite well, it's actually, it was actually uh, it's 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 simpler than it it's simpler than it looks, I believe. Yeah. Uh, could you explain that first, actually? I okay. Sure. Sure. All right. So um, okay, I'm going to put a few references that I like. Uh, so, yeah. because honestly, um, I think it's just a matter of finding the right references. So, okay, this thing, Susie, um, okay. So the the I I would say the best resource is. Uh, Vong's, uh, a mini course, mm. on topological strings, mm. and okay, so this is the best resource. Um, I would say the second one would be, so so this is based on the original idea came from um, the original idea came from Witten, in his uh paper on topological sigma sigma models, uh, topological. Mm. Sigma models. Oh, yes. Give me a bit of time, I'll just write it down. So um the, the, the thing to note over here is that his notation is a bit different. For example, he uses UL and UR to denote R symmetry. So mm. that's just a that's just something to note. Um he, the notation he uses is I mean it, it was a time when it was still new, so the modern the modern interpretation is um the notation is slightly different. Then um yeah, I would say other than that, uh I found David Tong Suzy notes quite useful. Um as usual. And let me take a look. Um uh oh oh and lastly there's also the mirror symmetry book. Mm. The mirror symmetry book. Let's see. So these are the four resources that I would say I've been using them quite a lot to study this. Um, yeah, okay, so the key idea is, yeah, give me a moment, I just need to pull out this, the, the book because uh, I can't recall it at the top of my head. Mm. Um, why does it Why does it say twisting? Like, that's the part I don't know. Uh, like, why, did, why, why twist? That's a weird word. Well, I guess... Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. It could be just terminology. So, yeah. So the mirror symmetry book in chapter sixteen, right? They mentioned talk about chapter sixteen talks about um talks about this twisting over here. The the yeah. thing is that uh for me when I tried to search su super symmetry twisting, I didn't get a lot of results. It's only when I started when I searched um topological strings that I got the results that I wanted. So that's just uh that's just something to note if you wanna study this. Yeah. You know, page 399. So roughly speaking. So um the idea is that okay, so the idea the idea is that uh we have when when we when we study uh for example two two supersymmetry, right? There is mm. there are all the generators. So for example to to expose we are in two dimensions curly curly n equals to two two as opposed to in two dimensions then this gives us uh four Suzy generators hmm. and they'll be denoted q 
plus q minus q bar plus and q bar minus. Um, right. yeah, I wrote a I wrote a blog on my on my on my I wrote an article on my blog that explains how to count supersymmetry right. generators as well. So yeah, it's just it's just a list of all the um yeah. Okay, so wait, do you need to code to make a GitHub website? Uh, I I use something called uh, I use something called uh, Jacky Jacky blocks. This one, um, you write it in Markdown, so it's not really code per se. Uh, it's just a, a bunch of Markdown files. Yeah. Oh okay. The setup is relatively simple compared to like um, um, setting up your own website. Yeah. Okay. So besides the Besides these generators, there's also um the, the thing about Suzy generators are that they are the first thing is that they are spinners as well, right? Um so the, in this case there are two right. wait 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 no no this is this is is this um, wait wait the plus and minus right are basically Spinner indices, if I remember correctly. Right, I, I think so, right? The plus and minus are spinner indices like this. So right. this transforms. And, and they're supposed to like represent chirality, right? Because if I remember correctly, if you have a Majorana spinner, um, in two dimensions, if you have a Majorana while spinner, then that thing is has only one component. So that's like Q plus. Let me check this. It's been a while. Yeah, so the, the, the plus roughly means... uh. Uh, left moving or right moving. I, uh, yeah, I forgot right. to know the, the convention, but I think this was actually in my document. I think. Huh. Yeah. So so the the the, the plus and minus indicate uh, a chirality and um, I believe um. Yeah, I believe this is this this transforms like a spinner. Okay, I I'm not entirely it's sure. It's a spinner. Yeah, it's a spinner. I'm not entirely sure if it's a Dirac spinner or a wheel spinner. Because is, is, is it is it's it's Majorana or wait Majorana. is it let me check. No. no. Um okay. Cause because I, it's not it's not real, so it's not. I see, I see. So okay, roughly speaking, be, besides the usually the symmetry transform the, the symmetry generators like the Lorentz generator and and the boost and stuff like that, they they are usually they're usually just a generator by itself. Um you don't really say that they transform like like they they they, they just, they just define a bunch of commutation relations. Um, okay. um but the special note about supersymmetry is that the generators are themselves uh they, they themselves have some sort of spin. Yeah. All right. Then there's also after defining the generators, one can see that um there's there's uh there are there are, there are even more symmetries that rotate the generators among themselves. So for example, uh, there's a there's a symmetry. So that that's where R symmetry comes in. R symmetry mm -hmm. is basically a symmetry that mixes the the generators, the Suzy generators themselves. So in right. this case, it'll be, for example, if F V X on, uh, Q plus, it'll give me minus Q plus, right? So we usually denote um action of uh. So F V is a symmetry generator itself. And usually we denote action by some by by the commutator, um or the leave bracket um, and yeah, that's just a that's just something we do quite often, and I believe there are some valid reasons behind doing so, um. Mm -hmm. But you can just think of this as an action, the action of F V on U plus. Okay, so yeah. there's a bunch of others as well. So Q, so there's, there's a F A, F V, and then there's F A as well. At least for two two, uh, symmetry. T two two D equals to two supersymmetry. There's a bunch of others like this. So F V and F A. So the F V is known as vector and F A is known as axial. Um right. yeah, so okay, so the Lorentz generator itself, uh in two in two two and in two dimensions, the Lorentz generator itself, there's only one non-trivial generator, which is the which is the zero one component um in in two D. So right. let's just denote that as a single M. So the key right. is the key is to note that um uh because because uh 
Okay, because M because M when when because Q plus and Q minus and the bars get transform as spinners, there's some transformation. Uh there's some transformation. The M X on the Q plus and Q minus as follows. Um or actually specifically this should be I M over here. And yeah, so so there's a bunch of uh yeah, basically the Lorentz group acts on the spinners as well. So what's something we can notice is that the FVs, the FAs, and the Ms, right, when they act on the Qs, there's something that they all have in common, right? When all of these act on the Qs, mm. uh they, they basically rotate the Qs into each other of sorts. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, they basically and in fact it's even it's even stricter than that. Uh when they act on Qs, the Q plus and Q minus, they are basically eigen uh eigen eigen vectors of sorts, meaning that um the computation relations look like uh if if I denote any one of these, um I'll just denote the T. If I did if I do any one of these, right, it is is proportional to it's proportional to Q plus. Yeah, it's proportional to Q yeah. plus for any one of the T's over here. Um and likewise for the bars and the minus as well. So same thing for all the rest. Uh yeah. Okay, so so in that sense, uh we can we can take linear combinations of these linear operators, right? These are linear operators. Yeah. So we can take linear combinations of them and Basically, if we consider the, the space spanned by all this, right, the span of all these three, right, taking linear combinations of these as the new so-called basis vectors, that just corresponds to a change in basis. And that that is what they mean by twisting. So there are F V, F A, and M. So there's there's one twist we can do, which is which is called the A twist. Or the A model or whatever. Um and the reason why it's called A and B is actually related to type. 2A uh, string theory and type 2B string theory. But um, I saw a video where Witten said that I think the naming was coincidental or maybe he was just smarter than he thought. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So MA is defined as um, it's defined as uh, okay, this, this depends on some convention but uh, the mirror symmetry book says it's plus FV right? whereas the the, the, the topological strings book says it's minus minus fv so i'm just going to stick to plus for now um yeah and then the so, B so if we have an a twist we're defining new operators um well we are kind of we, we are yes we are defining a new uh operator and and we, if we treat this as the lorenz yeah if we treat this as a as a new as the as the new lorenz symmetry <laughs> Then um yeah. and then we consider and then we redefine because because the Lorentz symmetry defines defines the spin, right? Yeah. So if we treat this as the new Lorentz symmetry and replace the old one, then in some sense we have redefined the spins for all the uh all the fields in our theory. I see. So this doesn't lead to like weird spins, right? This still gives us like half integral yeah. spins. Uh yes, I, I believe it's uh but there are some conditions. I, I think there are some conditions that you need to be satisfied. For example, the churn class and those kind of things. Um let me just pull up uh one of the mentions of this. So um yeah, so let me let me show you what I mean. There are some conditions that you need to satisfy. You can't take very weird combinations, linear combinations. Um so okay, yeah. So so here they say by considering a shift in spin, right, which yeah. is basically originates from the shift in the change in the basis of M, F, V, and F, A. Um, yeah. And then in order for the twisted theory to be physically consistent, one must ensure that the new Lorentz symmetry, um, continues to be non-anomalous quantum mechanically. I don't know what that means exactly, but basically. Uh, it's something involving churn classes and how. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. I I think I could explain this one. Oh, okay, um, sure. Yeah. So, uh, in quantum field theories, Lorentz symmetries are never anomalous. Um. I see. I think I think that's kind of like, 
Um, I think that's pretty, like, yeah, Lorenz symmetries are never anomalous. I have never seen that happen. Um, but I feel like the R symmetries can be anomalous. Mm -hmm. So, uh, according to my experience, whenever you have a symmetry that isn't a Lorenz symmetry, when you, whenever you have a global symmetry that isn't a Lorenz symmetry, uh, you should always check if it's anomalous or not. Um, but then, okay, we're defining a new Lorentz symmetry. Um, but if this this new Lorentz symmetry uh, should not also shouldn't have an anomaly, so therefore F V should R symmetry also shouldn't have an anomaly. Oh, um, but I apparently, see. but apparently that requires some kind of condition because usually, um, usually the anomaly for a certain global symmetry has to do with the indices, and when in, by saying indices, I'm talking about churn classes and stuff like that. Uh, of the fiber bundle, um, yeah, it's a deep topic, um, but you don't need to understand it in full depth here. You just need to know that there shouldn't be any anomalies. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, that's cool. Um, oh, and if you want to uh, study related things, you just need to study the chiral anomaly. I think that would be best. Ah, uh, okay, cool. So this is related. Cool, cool. Um. Yeah, so okay, so that's the A twist and going back to the B twist is uh basically M plus F uh A instead, the axial one. Um it's a bit unfortunate that the A is over here, but they mean different things. This A is just A twist and this A is axial and this V is yeah. vector. And it's just so, called A twist and B twist out of like because like there's no deep meaning in the names, right? Uh it, I think there's a it's a coincidence that is related to type A, type two A and type two B. Um, but yeah, how is no... it related to string theory though? Um, oh, it's related to the same string theory because uh, that if we if we consider the world sheet, right, the, the bosonic world sheet, it, yeah. the, the string traces are a world sheet, and um, and one can formulate string theory in terms of uh, a conformal field theory on the world sheet, yeah. Uh, so in bosonic string theory, there'll be there'll be fields x mu on the world sheet. Um and if we want to consider the, the generalization to super string theory is basically putting fermionic fields on the world sheet as well. Yeah. Um and then one must one, one usually says that uh, there's some supersymmetry on the world sheet. So uh world sheet supersymmetry. And this is this is uh slightly related, but it's a bit different from the world from, from the the target, the space-time supersymmetry. So well, sheet Susie is not immediately equal to space-time supersymmetry, although there are some right. over there. So that's just something to note. Um, and so, and so, uh, essentially, type two and type two B, uh, they they are different. That that they're different. Uh, if if you are aware of the NS and R, uh, boundary conditions you can put on the, on the, on the, on the. Fermionic um super strings, so yeah. So basically, I think the end the end result is that um type A two A and type two B string theories are are non linear sigma models that live on the world sheet or something. Yeah. So that that's where it roughly comes in. So but yeah, I'm not really sure in that aspect. Oh yeah, Susie okay. is studied on in super string theory. So, if you're wondering where this, why this is related, I would say, per, I'll, I'll, I'll probably need to understand super string theory to be able to understand why. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So okay. So now, now the main thing that everyone, everyone always wants to know is how do we, how do we deduce that um, the new bundles are as follows. So, uh, well, it's just, it's just. Method Wait, can I see the can I see the uh, equations previously again? This one? Oh uh, yeah. What so does gamma mean? Uh gamma is the is the space of all sections on this uh -huh. on this bundle. I see. What does phi star mean? Uh phi star is a pullback. It's a phi is a map from from uh, some space to some some manifold to some manifold, and phi yeah. star is the pullback of the of the bundle. So E over here is a bundle. Yeah. 
yeah so so that's what it means roughly speaking it just means I, I don't think there's a lot to worry about it because um in a non-linear sigma model you have a space your phi is a space from let's say n to m and yeah. okay i'll just denote sigma over here because that's what people usually use so m is some big space over here and this kind of defines an embedding of uh right. sigma into m so roughly speaking uh if if e is a bundle on m then the pullback of this roughly speaking is kind of like saying the bundle on m right all the bundles that live on m yeah and you consider the the where where this sigma is mapped into you kind of just say that these bundles are um like you it's transferring the attachment of the bundles on m to the attachment on sigma kind of okay yeah um but yeah that, that's something i'll probably want to look into if i want to understand it better um yeah so so how so yeah uh go going on about like how to tell that the fields are in those particular bundles or what yeah is. so actually it's the, the the key idea is just to count the count count the spin so there's just some it's just a bunch of like addition and subtraction so in other words um if i make a table over here uh for each of the fields so okay let me just um so usually i'm gonna make a table over here uh for, for each of the symmetry, Fb, then perhaps it's Ma equals to M plus Fa, and over here is Mb equals to M plus Fb. So I made a table yeah. of all the fields and their corresponding charges. Um, yeah. Then for, for example, for the, for the, for the component super, uh, the component of the super field. Um, yeah. Yeah, so roughly it corresponds to look looking at a bunch of numbers like this. Uh-huh. And then uh and then this will just be taken as this plus that, which is zero. And then MB, for example, this FV is uh okay, I didn't uh, this FV is plus one. So okay, in this case they are both zero. Uh but there are the other fields where like for example, uh let me find a nice few. Okay, uh, this is a nice one. So this is plus one minus one and this will be zero and this yeah. is a uh, plus one and this will be two so roughly speaking um uh when you have a one over here a one corresponds to a spin half view or minus yeah. one corresponds to a spin half view and then uh yeah. a plus minus two corresponds to a spin a vector view um and zero of course is the scalar and that's how we see uh that. So in, in fact, I would actually say that this is a bit of a it feels like there's a lot of how we needed to go through a lot of calculations to find out what bundle it is in and things like that. But yeah, oh I see it's just counting spin. So yeah, exactly. Trivial. So yeah, that's what I found a bit funny about it. Okay, now question is how do we get these numbers over here? So okay, the M over here, how we get these numbers? Um we actually look at the super fields. So um that's the way I, I look at it. Uh so so for example, if uh yeah, I, I don't know a way to look at it without the super few formalism yet, but I'm sure it can be done. So if I have the if I have a super few y and it takes in parameters x uh theta and theta bar, um the plus minus. So so these are super super space coordinates super space coordinates and this is known as the super field um then then this can be Taylor expanded in in uh thetas so this will correspond to us uh something like that plus um theta plus and because we take when we Taylor expand because the coordinates over here when they squared they give zero yeah. um and the bar version as well so because they square to zero, so the Taylor expansion is only linear in these coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. So so this will give me something like that. Um so so these 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 fields are uh, even though they're Taylor expanded in this theta plus, they, they still retain their dependence on x. So a super field can be seen as uh can be seen as basically a 
a collection of uh, component fields. So these are known as component fields. Hmm. Um, yeah, so so when we tailor expense of super few in terms of the super place coordinates, the grassman coordinates, it gives me a bunch of component fields. And we get things like um something like that. And there's a bunch of other terms, up to 16 terms in total. Uh yeah, and then we can put a bunch of constraints in on them, like chiral super fields and things. But the key import the important thing to know over here is just to see that um um, this will actually give us information on how to calculate the, the charges under the axial rotations and stuff. So, yeah. the answer is just to consider. Um, okay, so in 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 super space, so the the generators, the generators M A F A sorry the generators M F A and F E right the Lorentz generators and the R symmetry generators, uh the they, in terms of algebra, they just satisfy a bunch of computation relations with each other and with other fields, right? Um, right. But then, of course, in physics, we always want to find representations of these algebra, right? So we have this, this known as algebra, and we, on, we always want to find representations on some uh, space, on some space. And, and for example, Lorentz could be represented as a matrix, right? It could be represented as a matrix, right. um, the cosine and the shine thing. And then, uh, or, or it could be represented as a, so this would be like the matrix representation, or it could be represented as a operator, a differential operator, which would be like, yeah. um, yeah, all your partial derivatives with like time and, and whatnot. Uh, so this would probably be something like that. Um, mm. yeah. So, so in super space coordinates, the representation of these Lorentz generators and R symmetry generators, uh, are given as something like that. Um, basically, there are a bunch of differential operators. And that actually gives us a very easy way to um to to to, to consider the charges of these superspace coordinates. So yeah. it's something like that. In in fact, the, the most important thing over here are actually the signs in front of these in front of these um in front of these. Things. So the most important thing which I'll highlight in red is are these signs over here because they'll determine the charges. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so if if I continue writing it for F for F A and F B, uh I'll just write I wouldn't write the derivatives just to save some time. But basically they are they are like this plus I'm just copying this from a, from a text, from my textbook, from my from my notebook. But yeah. um they are they are usually given in the so that's oh sorry this is F B. Uh this is F B. F A is F A is uh minus theta plus plus theta minus plus theta and minus theta. Yeah, so so the 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 the, the, the black dots over here are derivatives that I that they're, they're just these things that I denote as derivatives. Um yeah, so 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 actually, if we add um, if we want to consider what the char the, the so called charge of the superspace coordinates are, then yeah. this just amounts to acting this m operator on the superspace coordinates directly. So in this case, you can see that it's given by this because the derivative will kill it. Every other derivative is zero. The derivative here will kill it, but then introduce it back. Um, and then we consider m on let's say theta minus, then there will be minus theta minus because the derivative here kills it, and then the it brings it, it multiplies like this, and there's a minus sign in front of it. Yeah. So if we do this on all the coordinates, we'll get uh we'll get um we'll get the charge, we'll get the charges of these superspace coordinates yeah. generated by these uh transformations, these symmetries. So then then all that amounts to after that is uh if we know, if we know this, if we know the supercharge of this guy, which, um, I I'll assume to be equal to zero. I'm not sure if this assumption is valid, but I think it, it doesn't really matter because you just need the dimensional. It's basically a dimensional analysis. You just need this, uh, this super, the supercharge of this guy to be the same as this guy. And since we know, the supercharge of, 
um the the super space coordinates theta plus is is a uh, is plus one over here since we know it's plus one then we we can infer that the super the supercharge of this psi which is contracted with it is minus one so if this is plus one then this will be minus one so so it just so if basically if this is it's a super space coordinate the 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 thing to look over here is highlighted orange if we know this is zero if it, we know this is not charged under this R of symmetries and Lorentz transformations then we know and, and we know that this is plus one from the calculation below which is just acting these differential operators on the super space coordinate directly and looking mm. at these red signs over here then we can infer that this must be minus one and um and if we repeat it for these two, we see that this is plus two, so this must be minus two. Hmm. Yeah. So I I have a question. So um, we don't consider topological twisting in like higher dimensions, right? It's just a two dimensional thing. Um, that's a good question. Um, I I'm not entirely sure actually. Yeah. Is it is your concern because the super space coordinates are only well defined in Small no, because I, I feel like the whole story can only work in two dimensions. Maybe you could do a Google search right now because I think that would be interesting. Sure. So, uh, this this thing super symmetry. So yeah, uh, you're interested in this thing super symmetry in. Well, not really. I just want to check. Maybe I'm if I look at some of the papers. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at this paper. I okay. This works in R. They are working in R four. Yeah. Um. Mutation group. I think I think what they're describing over here is a yeah it's a supersymmetry twisting. So I think it is possible to do supersymmetry twisting in high dimensions because they're working at R four. Um. Yeah. What's your main concern with regard to the dimensions? Uh, no, not really. I don't. Really, I just I was just curious. I see. I think. Yeah. So actually, uh, that just mounts a bunch of calculations like that, and and that also gives justification to why the charges over here. I mean, for the Lorentz group, is um. Yeah, so so I calculate, I'll usually calculate it via the super field because it just mounts a bunch of arithmetic. Um yeah, and it's important to note that uh the theta plus is over here is uh plus one, but the theta minus over here is because of this minus sign is minus one. So this will be plus one. And so all the twisting it, it's just a, a table like this. And yeah, I kind of wish they write it out. In, in the papers because this is definitely more accessible than than uh, yeah. what they usually write, which is just the super symmetry generators. Hmm. Um yeah, so after you deduce that and then your your MA and MB become the new the new Lorentz the symmetry, then you kind of just um match it up with uh with, with, with I mean you just declare that since the spin two is transformed in what bundle and yeah, that, that's pretty much the story. Wait, but like, what, what happened? Like, all you did was, all you did so far was just define new Lorentz generators, but like, did, you didn't change the Lagrangian or anything? Uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I, um, I, I'm not super sure, but I, I, I also believe that we didn't change the Lagrangian, but when I heard some talks on topological string theory by Hiroshi Uguri. Yeah. Uh, he did say something about adding some terms, so I'm not very sure how to answer this question. Like, is, like, based on what I've just heard, it just seems like the same theory, but with, like, different names for objects. It seems like it. Wait, there's, there, there is a point that they mentioned over here, which is, uh, um, which is, uh, Let's see. 
there, there, there was some point where they talked about the motivation. So, okay, so the mirror symmetry group has this nice table. Um, the Hilbert spaces do not differ. And why is it called topological twisting? Uh, that's a good question too. I'm not super sure. Um, they did mention something about curvature in this in this book. Let me try to find it. So define physical operators. This is also related to BRC supersymmetry or something. I think I think the QAs and the QBs, they they commute. No, uh, not not commute. They they square to zero or something. So there is something hmm. we do with BRC. Wait, wait, could you like go back to that page again? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna see. It seems that nothing changes. What changes is the set of operators and states in the Hilbert stage, which we consider to be physical. Huh. Uh. Oh. Hmm. hmm. If. Um. This is interesting. Um, yeah. Wait, okay. Um, let's see here. Are these gauge theories? I suppose they... Let's see. Okay, let me check. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, is this like the whole talk about which states are physical or not? Is this like, I think this is, maybe this is from the perspective of string theory. I'm not totally sure. Mm, this the the Q co homology sounds a lot like BRSD. Mm, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure. BRSD usually comes when there's gauge theory, so I'm not sure where the gauge comes in over here. Yeah, mm, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm still not certain what's the relation between the supersymmetry charges and the Q co homology and BRSD because um, yeah. Well, I did remember somewhere when they talked about motivation. Let me just search the word motivation. Um, um yeah, let me let me try to find give me a bit of time. Um Oh, do you want to start talking about the spinner um, bundles while well, I look actually, at it? Well, actually, I think I found something on page 400 um, where it says that um, you can use twisting to preserve supersymmetry right, right. on curved surfaces. Do you know how this works? Uh, let me read it. Um, so, page 400. Supersymmetry is lost on the curved surface. Uh, wait, can higher genuses Riemann surface can can they be flat, or there's some, or is there some theorem that says that they can't? I don't know, but I think they can't be. I'm not sure though. I know the torus can be flat, but I'm not sure about higher genuses. Um, yeah. Supersymmetry is lost in the curved surface. However, it would be interesting to find a theory of hmm, Let's see here. 
Wait a minute. Wait, I think that, wait a minute. This does have to do with each theory, I think. Oh. Right, because they, on page 401, uh, they talk about gauging the new rotation group. Huh. Let's see. So, so this is about that. By the spin connection, what do they mean by that? Um, hmm. Is it a new spin connection or the old spin connection? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm new to this, so I'm just looking at it. Huh, they talk about gauging things, but I'm not entirely sure. Wait. Um... My question is, why can't they Wait, just gauge the old rotation group by the spin connection? Wait, my connection is, why is this even a gauge theory? Wasn't supersymmetry a global symmetry in this case? What what am I missing here? I get it. Why are they talking about gauging the symmetry when oh, there's a, it's global? There's a, there's some mention of um, this well, curvature in this other group. Let me just bring it up. But, but but I don't get it. Like supersymmetry is a global symmetry in this model. I don't understand what they mean by gauging it. Uh, but I think like okay, but like whatever. Um, uh huh. No. Yeah, I think I kind of get it. It is a different theory. Oh. Well, Lagrangian does change. I see. Is it right. does it change when you when you when you gauge the thing with the spin connection after you gauge the thing with? The yeah, it has to do with the. They define how the theory is gauged differently. Ah, I don't like that I word, see. but yeah, why do they keep talking about gauge? This isn't a gauge theory, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> wait, I mean, like, am I tripping here? Because like, I, this isn't a gauge theory, is it? Like, I'm confused. Why would they use that word? This makes sense. You might be interested mm. in the in the PDF, the mini course on topological thinking. I think do, they talk about. Do they mention gauge? Uh, yeah, they, they do mention uh, covariant derivatives, things like that. Basically putting... okay. Oh, okay. So so I guess they're talking about it from the perspective that it's a gauge theory under diffeomorphism invariance or something. That makes perhaps sense. So, perhaps. My okay, guess that makes is, um, sense. I see. So my guess is they probably, from, from the flat uh, theory, they usually want, maybe they, from the flat theory, they originally wanted to upgrade it to a curve theory. The yeah. theory of curve space time. Um, so that's where they basically they gauge it from the flat one to uh to the they use the diffeomorphism gauge to transform the flat Lagrangian into the curved Lagrangian. But there's probably some obstruction to that, like um yeah, there's probably some obstruction to that. So mm. maybe when they define this new new twisted theory, maybe you can do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's uh, my guess for the moment. I'll need to study more about this. Yeah, but it is a cool construction. Um, yeah, I think there's a be better way to look at this. So, um, okay, maybe I should study this next week. Um, And also, uh, about spinners, yeah, I don't know, like, um. I don't think I have much more time today. So maybe right, like um, next time I will like go through the whole thing. Okay, cool. cool. Um yeah. I I will uh 
Uh, okay, now I'm considering. I think it's okay for me for the time being to focus on spinners in 2D. Uh. The reason being that like the spinners, the thing with spinners is that conventions differ in like different dimensions, and it's a bit of a mess. Um, the, the the mathematical theory for spinners is actually not that much of a mess. Um, um, but like the physical calculations are a bit of a mess. So I think I'm just gonna stick with two D for now. Good. And like, there's all this annoying representation theory. I'm not sure. <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure. Um, how I should approach, like, I, I feel like what physicists mean when they say representation theory and what mathematicians mean when they say mathematician representation theory are kind of different also, so I don't know. Mm, I see. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I want to understand the Clifford algebra better because, um, counting supersymmetry in, in, Counting supersymmetry in different dimensions would lead to different number of the supersymmetry generators. So, yeah, I think it'd be good to understand spinners in general, I guess. Yeah, and also I'm not sure how how so like I'm trying to understand the things from a perspective of a mathematician. I'm not sure how they would see this. Um, but yeah, um, uh. Yeah, there are a few things to work on. Mm, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, I think today I, I sure. think yeah. Okay. I to... yeah. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for your time. Yeah. yeah, thank you for teaching me this. This was interesting. Yeah, it helped. Um thanks, thanks. Okay, next time next time I'll come with something fun. Okay. Okay, sure, sure. See you. Bye. Thank you. See you.